Welcome to Minot and welcome to getting into motorcycles or learning more about them and how to stay current with what's going on. Some of the things I want to talk to you about is going to be how to get involved with all the things that are going on. First thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get with motorcycle, the safety representatives with your organization. They're going to be able to help you out and make sure that you are properly trained and certified with what you need to do to have a safe ride up here. The riding season is roughly from April to October, which there is plenty of rides that go on and is beautiful scenery to ride around in. To do so, we do want to make sure that you're doing it safely. So we do want to emphasize a few rules. Basic rules is to have, make sure you have all the gear all the time. And all the gear consists of your helmet, safety glasses, gloves, long sleeves, as well as long pants and over the ankle boots. And this is everything that we will go over in course if you decide to take one with us. That is the stuff, the minimum requirements that will help keep you safe. There's also a few recommended requirements to ensure that you have high visibility clothes on, reflective clothes will also be able to help be seen by other drivers around. Some of the minor specific hazards that we do have out here is that we can get rain immediately or we will have people that like to ride in the winter time and then we'll get some black ice. Some of the drivers around here are not exactly observant to the motorcycle riders around them. So they do become a special hazard that we do have to look out for, but slowly but surely, the abate of North Dakota is helping us with the visibility and the attentiveness of other motorcycle riders. In my position of where I am in the realms of the motorcycle world, both professionally and personally and enthusiasts, some of the biggest issues that I see is people getting motorcycles that are not fit for them. And what I mean by not fit is that they can't touch the ground flat foot with both feet when they're standing still, which causes a safety concern in case the motorcycle may possibly try to tip over or somebody getting a bike that is too powerful for them in their skill level and experience. My name is Staff Sergeant Dylan Rutherford. Um, I'm a 69th crew chief for 5 AMXS, also a squadron motorcycle safety rep with also being a motorcycle safety foundation coach. So a few things you should look for before you buy a bike. One, you want to make sure the tires have plenty of tread depth. Two, you want to make sure all your lights work and you also want to ride the bike a little bit or if you don't have your license, have somebody that does have their license, ride the bike for you and make sure the bike is mechanically sound. So a few steps you should take. First, you should create a MUST account. That is a motorcycle safety unit tracking tool account that will help your squadron motorcycle safety reps track your training. After you do that, the squadron commander will give you initial preseason safety briefing. Once you complete that, then you complete a basic rider course one and after the basic rider course one, 60 days to a year after that, you'll complete a basic rider's course two. So the must account, you can go to the Air Force portal and in the search bar on the top right, you can type in motorcycle safety tracking tool, or you can just use the acronym M-U-S-T-T. -T. After you take BRC one, what you'll do is you'll go down to the DMV, you'll give them your BRC one card signed by an MSF coach that you can put into class. And what they will do is they will give you a test. Once you complete the test at the DMV, they will give you your endorsement on your motorcycle license. So after BRC2, you want to take the class every five years per AFI 91207. The class is required every five years after taking BRC2. So I'm senior I'm Justin O'Leary. I'm from the 705th Munition Squadron here at Minot Air Force Base. I am both our squadron motorcycle safety representative and I'm also one of the Motorcycle Safety Foundation instructors here on base. So I, I teach people how to ride and I show people how to get there. So we're going to start checking on our tires and our wheels. You know, we want to make sure that we got a good tread depth. Make sure we ain't got no cuts or gouges on the side here and make sure the wheel itself, the rim, is in good condition. We ain't got no cracks or anything like that. So not every bike is going to have a choke. If this is an older one, it does. We're just going to make sure it comes out, goes back in. Going to come up here. We're going to check our low beams. They're working up here. And then we're going to switch to our high beams. Make sure the high beam is working. So right here, we're just open this up.
Just give it a couple quick squeezes. We're just gonna make sure it's got that retention so we can feel it pulling this way and release that way. We're just gonna make sure the spring is in good condition. And make sure we don't have any cracks or breaks in the side stand itself. Here, the side stand actually comes up and goes back down. We're gonna check our belt. Just looking for any dry rotting, uneven wear, anything like that. So the acronym that I was using to inspect this bike is T-Clocks. So you start with T, that's gonna be your tires, your wheels, and then we move on to C, which is your choke. Um, not every bike has a choke, but this one's old enough that it does. Then we go on to L, which is your lights. So we check our headlights and our turn signals, and O is your oil. So we check the level, check to make sure we're not leaking any, check to make sure we have some in the reservoir. Uh, another C, which is your clutch. So we just make sure the clutch is doing its job. And then S is for your side stand. Just make sure it's gonna hold the bike up. 